Hey, hi everyone. This is Kayla Kincannon. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm a neurodivergent occupational therapist in the Philadelphia area that specializes in mental, relational, and sexual health. I am recording this directly after my accessible cover letter video, but I threw on a sweatshirt. It's like bright blue from Avalon, New Jersey, from when I worked at a camp for children with visual impairments called Helen Diller Vacation Home. And uh, welcome to my bed, internet. <laughs> Just kidding. That's probably only funny to me. Uh, but I'm sitting in my bed because my partner has football going on this Sunday and I have a little bit of twinkle light action behind me. Otherwise, same light gray background as usual. So this is the next part of the how. How do you create an accessible cover letter? Because I had this idea and I tried to find a instructions or tutorial directions online and there really wasn't anyone talking about accessible cover letters that I found. If there is, please send it to me because I want to improve my packet and my resources and share it more widely if there's something else out there. But I have this idea that I think is really helpful for both applicants and employers because it's accessible, it's convenient, and I think it's an opportunity to showcase your personality and stand out from other applicants. Um, so I want to teach you how, but first I have to draw attention to how this process isn't actually useful or accessible to everyone. Um, there's very well documented discrimination that happens in hiring practices, usually related to racism and ableism. Um, but of course, other marginalized identities often really experience um, less calls for interviews, less calls for second interviews, and less job offers. And that's really not disputable. It's well documented. And so I recognize that I have a lot of privileges in just popping on the internet and recording myself. And not everyone has those same opportunities, either because of abilities or identities, that a video might not actually help them get a job. So if you can't or don't want to do this, obviously you don't have to. But if you are curious about these methods, I want to show you how I've done it because it is several steps, but they're all you know free and pretty easy. And um, I created my template video so I could send just one video link to employers because previously I was recording individual videos and doing each of these steps for each application and they got a little tedious. So it's kind of a, a double benefit for me to just have one video that I share with employers and also teach you all along the way. So let's see. Um, first, I want to talk about YouTube accessibility and why I've chosen to use YouTube as a platform both for regular content videos that I have posted and plan on posting and also for these job applications. So YouTube, you can change the watch speed, you can rewind, fast forward, rewatch a video, the video doesn't go away, you get as many times to watch it as you want. You can add the subtitles. Um, I always link to a document with the subtitles all copy and pasted. So if someone does not have English as their first language, you can copy and paste that right into a translator. I start all my videos off with my name, pronouns, who I am, and a visual description. You get the opportunity to hear my voice and kind of sense my personality and probably hear a couple bad jokes along the way. It's free to upload. Anyone can create a YouTube channel and you can record with fancy equipment or you can just use your phone. Or in this case, I'm using my webcam because I'm screen recording from Zoom so that, you know, I can show you what uh, I'm actually looking at while I'm talking about it. I also really like that you can upload to private or unlisted playlists or just gather a private or unlisted link for a video. So if it's something personal that you're putting out there, you don't have to make it publicly accessible, which is what I did for my other job application videos because I didn't want, you know, everyone to be able to access my 
personal address and phone number and what jobs I was applying to in case of rejection or just in case of ultimately deciding we weren't a just right fit that it, you know, it wasn't out in the open. And something that I also really like is in the description box that you can add a bunch of different links and send people to different places, as well as in the editing stage, you can add video topics at different timestamps so that it makes for very easy skimming or rewatching to find exactly what you're looking for. Let's see. Um, I've done this before with my XES blog read along um, where I did a screen share and a read through and you can do this with anything really in a application packet if you have a cover letter, a resume, a CV. I have a, a longer resume or CV. I think I'm at like six pages. So the read through for that, which I'm also going to do is going to be a lot longer of a video, um, but I will divide it up via timestamps. And I'm going to be intentional about reading every word that's on it, because part of accessibility and, you know, human rights is that we shouldn't filter or skim things that we're claiming to be accessible. We should say word for word and let people that are gathering that information in a way other than reading with their eyeballs that we can, you know, all share the same information. So let's see. Um, so I posted my accessible cover letter video. That's the link I'm sending to actual future employer job applications. I'm using this video to talk about the how, and I actually might divide it up because it's going to be a bit lengthy of a process, but I'm not a tech person. I have like mild tech skills that I got from my dad and I will use them, but I, I think there's probably other videos online that are going to be more helpful about generating a QR code or whatever it is, but I have to do the process anyway. So I figured I'd record it and you can just follow along step-by-step step with me. 